you will go there with me, you will find a very inspiring, encouraging word in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 19. Um, as usual, I read from the New King James Version. Uh, you may have just the Old King James Version, you may have the NIV, um, you may have another version of the Bible downloaded as an app on your phone. Uh, so the words may be a little different, but nevertheless, uh, we should be in the same area. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when you find that scripture, would you please say Amen? Amen. And the scripture reads to us, says, when Pilate, starting at the 13th verse, I apologize, and they may have the scriptures printed above me as well, uh, which I see them do. Uh, thank uh, God for Sister Howe, who's always been a great help and a great assistance. I send to her sometime through the week what I'm going to preach, my title, and sometimes we'll put some visual pictures to go along with it, but uh, thank you, Sister Mary Howe, for just being who you are and doing what you do as we put this technology to work since we invested so much money in it. Amen. Amen. The 13th verse reads us out of John, the 19th chapter said, When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, <laughs> And about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And I say to you in Bible study, that word behold means look. Look, this is your king. The 15th verse says, But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. The 18th verse says, where they crucified him and two others with him one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Let me uh, use for a subject today as we uh, observe the Lord's Supper. We know our Lord's Supper table always say, do in remembrance of me. I want to talk about a day you should always remember. I know there's days that you would like to forget. I know there are events you would like to forget. I know there are times probably in your life you would like to forget there's probably someone you done had an encounter with or relationships with that you would like to forget. There's probably some folk that done did some things to you that you would like to forget. There's just some of us in life have some moments, times, and instances that we would just like to forget. Do I have a witness with me? I know I'm not the only one. That's just some things that uh, for, depending on your age, I don't know your age group, but there are some things that probably done transpired in your life or done happened in your life that you would just like to forget. But, but, but I don't want to focus on that today. I want to talk about a day you should always remember. Uh, you, you can forget what you want to forget, but, but, but I want to talk about a day you should always remember that there are some things worth Remembering uh, that there's some great things and uh, just as there's been some bad things that, that you would like to forget, there have been some triumphs in your life that you will always remember. And, and, and as we look at, at, at this particular passage, uh, there, there, there are certain days uh, uh, that we should always remember and hold dear until we die. There have been so many events that took place, and no matter where you was or what you was doing, you remember that day. I know what I'm talking about. I know I should have a witness. That moment either changed your life or it possibly changed the world. But whatever it was, you remember that day. Matter of fact, there's some things that took place. You remember just exactly where you was when 
when it happened and you remember what you did in response to what happened. It was etched in your mind and in your memory bank. You remember it completely. It's, it's something that just stood out and it meant something to you. Some of us here today are much older than myself. And you remember certain significant days. Some of us here today remember exactly where you were and what you was doing when you heard that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. You still remember it like it was yesterday. Some of us, some of us sitting in here today, you remember exactly where you was and what you was doing when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. It's forever etched in your mind. You remember that particular day. You know what happened in the hotel in Memphis. You can play it out in your mind like it happened yesterday. But if that was a signal of events for this generation today, Brother Mike, I realize that there are some folk in here may not have been born yet when Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. There's some folk here today, even if they were born, they don't remember receiving the news of John F. Kennedy. But there are some in this generation today, they remember clearly 911. Do I have a witness? You remember what happened that day. You remember where you was at during the time that particular day. I was actually at home watching TV. That morning when the second plane flew into the second tower. When the towers came down, when the plane went down in Pennsylvania, some of us here remember that day. Glued to your TV. When the Pentagon, which is the seat of power and the wealth in this country, you know what I'm talking about, vulnerable to a terrorist attack. And the media all over the country was making claims, rightly so, that 911, 2001, changed the world. It changed lives, and it changed the world. And I'm not here to make light of that day, or to say that that day is not of very importance, because families are still suffering. I realize that. I realize also children are still without their parents. Almost 3,000 Americans lost their lives. And that day and ever will be etched in their mind of a day of disaster. But as a Christian, y'all gonna help me preach this, I'm not gonna be long. As a believer, as much as my heart goes out to those families of 911, as much as the pain is still fresh in their hearts, in their memories, I'm sure for many of them, the pain, the memory is so raw, it cannot even bear the touch of being remembered. I do not wish to take anything from their pain or anything from their memory. But I suggest there is another day. Not 911, 2001. But on Friday. Oh, y'all gonna help me? In AD 33. On a scar shaped hill. On a blood soaked cross. Our world changed forever. Because a church is more sinister than Osama bin Laden. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Y'all help me with this? If you thought Osama bin Laden was a terrorist, I know one that was more sinister than him. And his name was Satan. Y'all want to help me here? He changed our world forever. Because I'm telling you, he invaded the Garden of Eden. So planted and destroyed and brought down to the very love, yeah. word of God. Yeah. Yeah. 
He said, he, did God say it? Or did Adam say it? He planted the seed of doubt. And he ate of the fruit, the Bible says. And Adam also ate with her. Church, I want to tell you, they ate of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And because Adam is our federal head, the human race has been plunged forever into destruction. And the wrath of God has been turned on men because of our first parents. Y'all gonna help me with this? Succumb to the terrorists Satan himself. And for that cause, we are plunged into death and hell. But the Bible says the seed of a woman is to crush the head of the serpent. Now, have some Bible readers with me. And the serpent is to bruise his head. But the terrorist attacks keep on coming. Satan is not done yet. He's still attacking today. If you go and did something back in the Garden of Eden, go back there in your memory lane of your life. He still is attacking today. I tell you, he threw them at Moses. He threw them at Abraham. He threw his attacks at David. Solomon, greater men than you and I. And he's still throwing his attacks today. That Tuesday morning on September 11, 2001 started out as a beautiful day. I'm going to get you where I'm going here in just a second. They remember how beautiful the sunshine was. How crisp the air was. And then suddenly, shockingly, everything changed. That's the way life is. You have to be very young and inexperienced to not understand that sometimes life starts and it starts out with sunshine, crisp air, blue sky. But before the sun goes down, everything you know can be upset. Do I have a witness? I know that they experienced that at 911, but in your life, you don't have some 911. Change 
your thoughts, change your life, and change your situation. Tell three people Satan knows when to attack. Let me tell you, church, things can turn upside down. Your health can fall in a minute. Your family can fall apart in just a second. I wish I had a witness here. What you hold to, what you sure about can start shaking underneath you, can make you doubt the very faithfulness to God himself. That sacred spot. I was just doing some reading when I was looking at preparing this message of 911. I just went back to do some research on it. That sacred spot, that very sacred spot, because I want you to see the difference. Because what I was told was fair was very sacred, a sacred spot at that time. But where Jesus was crucified in was a sacred spot. That sacred spot where those towers fell have been given the name Ground Zero. It's a hollow spot. It's Ground Zero. But Ground Zero is not in New York. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Ground Zero is outside the walls of the city of Jerusalem. If you want to know the truth, it's on a hill called Calvary. Oh, I'm going to tell you about Ground Zero. For it is there that God will not only change the world, but he will change eternity. Oh, I wish I had a witness. For in that spot, deacons, God acted out a cosmic drama that began with a terrorist attack. Oh, I tell you, same God, he had a plan in the Garden of Eden. But God had his plan at ground zero. Oh, I wish I had a plan church with me. Satan attacked God's faithfulness. He attacked God's goodness. Satan attacked God's plan. And God in the situation room. Y'all to hear what I'm saying. With himself. Said he has eaten from the tree. Of the knowledge of good and evil. And unless he eat from the tree of life. God met with himself. And decided to put man out of the garden. And he pleaded. He placed a shadow of them there with a fire going around that man could not come back that way. Why well, would you get this? Man couldn't come back through the garden. God made sure the man couldn't come back that way to the tree of life. Then if man had to go home, he had to go home another way. And that way was through Jesus. All right, all right. Somebody ought to help me preach here. Yeah, yeah. God was in the same situation room by himself. Not decided. Because before the foundation of the world, God already had planned how he would act out. That's it. That's it. He knew how his response was going to be to ground zero. For there was a wind and a way. Before there was a will of a beacon, God had already decided that since man cannot go home that way, he would open another way. At ground zero, we see three crosses. See three crosses, one man dying in sin, one man dying to sin, 
And one man died for sin. A day to remember. A day you should always remember. And when I look at that man on the left, he was dying in sin. He said, he saved others. Let him save himself. And let him save us. And the man on the right who was dying to sin, he said, leave that man alone. He's done nothing amiss. He said, Father, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And that man in the middle, Jesus, he was dying for sin. For he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, today you shall be with me in paradise. My brothers and my sisters, I don't want you to think I'm making light of September the 11th. I'm just trying to get you to trust in the fact that God was in control even on September 11th. Oh, I told you last week, God was still in the same place doing the same thing. God was present, active, and in the fact. Even when it looked like the devil had taken over. Y'all gonna help me? You don't have to take my word, but allow me to share with you some known facts, which I'm sure you may know. When those twin towers started coming down and the dust had covered lower Manhattan, God showed up. What you mean, Pastor Kyle? That's a good question. A piece of the World Trade Center tower failed in the rubble in the shape of a cross. They have taken that piece, that piece of the World Trade Center that fell in the shape of a cross, they enshrined it in glass. There are some people who don't want that cross in the memorial. Because they want no mention of God. See, God showed up even in the midst when the devil thought he had won the battle. Watch this. They didn't want no mention of God, Jesus, are Christians. But I submit that whenever the devil thinks he has done his best, God shows up with a cross. I wish I had about four or five witnesses here with me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, whenever the devil thinks he's done his best, God will show up Let me prove to you what I'm saying in Scripture. Some thought that God wasn't present, Reverend Thick Penn, and the devil thought he had done his best in Catholic. But God showed up, you ought to hear me, on the cross. Some of y'all gonna catch that. Now the cross is the symbol in mathematics for a plus sign. Uh -huh. uh -huh. right. right. Marcel, right. you did any math in school, you know that the cross is a symbol for a plus sign. It represents adding. And when I look at what took place at 911, and when I look at what took place out of the right. the cross is the symbol for a plus sign, right. which I want to submit to you that the cross of Christ is a plus sign. Yeah. Plus it's out any minus minded humanity. So whatever say we throw in the minus column, y'all want to hear me? 
The cross shows up and put a plus sign there in the plus column. So whatever Satan trying to take out of your life, God come back and add to you. Devil showed up at Calvary. I need about five or six women that had some minuses in your life. And when the cross showed up, when Jesus came into your life and added a plus in your situation, whatever the devil had taken, he had to come back and give it back. Because the plus sign showed up. As we remember today what took place out on Calvary, you need to be excited because it says as often as you do it, do it in remembrance at the cross, at the cross, where I first, y'all gonna help me, saw the light, and the mornings rolled away. It was there, God on that. At ground zero, it was there. When things got chaotic in my life, it was there. Yeah. Yeah. When my household had hell running through it, it was there. Yeah. Yeah. When folk talked behind your back, it was there. Yeah. Yeah. When folk didn't treat you right on your job, it was there by faith. Yeah. 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 You received, and now I'm happy. And the world can't take it away. My brothers and my sisters, he died. Reverend Tucker used to say, didn't he die? He died? Didn't he die much? He died. Somebody had to help me preach here. Yeah, all right. I know some of our churches that got so contemporary now that yeah, yeah. you don't have the deacons doing devotion too much anymore. All right. All right. I know when it got so contemporary that we have praise team trying to praise us up. Yeah. But I'm still old school. Yeah. And what getting me up when they say he died? Yeah. Uh -huh. Didn't he die? Yeah. Y'all gonna help me with this? Yeah. All I got to hear is he died. Yeah, all right, yeah. all right, we did that. Yeah. He died. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had somebody to help me. Because when I hear that, I get happy. Yeah. Because I know my sins was going to bring me to hell. But God sent Jesus to die.
Stay in bed all Saturday night. Y'all come on and help me close this. But Sunday morning, God showed up. Is there anybody here that knows that when light turns on you, God will show up. When you have your 911. Get down!